You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. It's only a kick, a jump, a block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident fanalist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. Well, today we're doing it. Um, we've been talking about it, and it's something that needs to be done, and it's going to get done. I don't know how many days this is going to take. Maybe we finish it today. Maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a bye week. we got all the time in the world. We're not going to put the defense under a microscope, despite whatever concerns there were. Obviously, the offense is the biggest problem. It's the place where there's the most issues. And so I'm going to look at every single offensive play and try to give, essentially, a play-by-play of what went right, what went wrong. Now, obviously, this is not going to be a very rosy podcast. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is going to be somewhat unfortunate. I have not done this yet. We're doing this live. I'm definitely not doing this two times in a row. This is a lot of work as it is. So we're going to do some live reactions here. I could record this as a video too, but that's just, you know, it's one of those things that I'm going to end up doing too much. I'm going to end up hating it and we're not going to finish it. So um, I'm going to, you know, I, again, I, I can't know everything, but there's been a lot of talk about the scheme and that's that's the primary thing as far as especially the passing. I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of complaints about the offensive line pass blocking, run blocking. I'm not going to know 100% if guys are running wrong routes, unless, of course, we continue to see guys running to the same areas. But there are going to be a couple little telltales in terms of whether there are schematic problems or just execution problems. Schematic problems are there's no good option here. Execution problems are there's good options if, you know... The offensive line could block if the wide receiver could catch if the quarterback had seen it or thrown it or thrown it accurately if the running back had run the correct direction things of that nature also there was a comment about motion so i'm going to mention if there is well i, I shouldn't say there was a comment about motion in, in packing it after dark there was a talk about lafleur's scheme and are we seeing lafleur's scheme and knowing what they're doing well play one we already got motion Jaden reed coming in motion Pitch to A.J. Dillon, they pick up, I don't know, four or five yards. For whatever reason, the All-22 doesn't show, and I don't feel like following along on the thing, so whatever. Doesn't matter. We'll call it a, a moderately successful play. What's interesting about this play, um, and I've mentioned this a couple times, and again, I don't know, but I, I mentioned before that there are plays where you'll, for example, have two double teams on the interior. And there, there's good and bad there. And the, the good is it's automatic yards. The bad is it's very limited automatic yards because you're not really accounting for the guys at the next level. Now, maybe that's not exactly how this is supposed to go. But we've got, just so we're clear, the right guard, right tackle crashing down on the defensive tackle. So he's erased, right? Then there is somewhat of a schematic issue, which actually gets executed, but it's a schematic issue, and it is what everybody has been complaining about this game. Luke Musgrave coming across the formation, taking on Max Crosby by himself. Now again, as far as the Shanahan, McVay, that whole scheme thing, I mean, you got one guy coming in motion, then you got the tight end coming across the other side and, and, and blocking. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the definition of, of Shanahan we're looking for is, but for a lot of people, it's just pieces moving around and misdirection and all that. Clearly, that's on display. Is it a smart decision? Probably not. But essentially, Musgrave just 
cut blocks or, or falls at the feet of Crosby, which causes a slight hesitation. Um, the, the thing is, though, Zach Tom, the tackle, doesn't ever come off the defensive tackle, meaning he never tries to get up to the next level, meaning I, I don't think he um, was ever responsible of getting to the next level. And then you see Romeo Dobbs coming in as though he was supposed to come get this linebacker. I don't know. But it, it, it just feels to me like a play that was designed to get A.J. Dillon up to the linebacker, hit the linebacker, and just take the four yards. And that's assuming Max Crosby doesn't just laugh at Luke Musgrave and tackle our guy behind the line of scrimmage, which I believe is about to happen seven different times. Or at our tight end. Did I say linebacker? Tight end. But as best as I can tell, they did what they were supposed to do. Next play, they essentially did it again, but were a little bit smarter about it. And what I mean by that is they had the two double teams on the inside and then let the tight ends handle the outside. Now... Tight ends on the outside isn't great, but at least if you're going to do that, don't run to the outside. Run straight up the gut where you got two double teams. The problem is, our guys lost their double teams. Runyon and Zach Tom got essentially beat. Now, Zach Tom tried to get up to the next level, but Runyon just got thrown on his face. So we can't even execute a double team well enough to get our guys some yards. Now, it was still a positive play, I believe. He probably got two yards, putting us in a third and two-ish. But it's pretty pathetic when you are scheming to just steal yards. Like, look, just go double team that guy so we can guarantee you don't lose your blocks. And then he throws John Runyon like five yards across the field. Like for crying out loud, man, can you just not be the worst ever? Like you make it look bad. You know what I mean? Like it's one thing to lose a little bit. It's another thing for him to just throw you. And he's literally like flying across the field. I mean, that, that should have been a first down. But again, we can't execute a double team. Crazy. And then the third play, again, we got guys in motion. Musgrave's coming across the formation. This time he's going to be used as a lead blocker. Those will get snapped just as he crosses the center. And then he dives straight ahead to execute a block. And the block is essentially to follow Musgrave as a lead blocker. Now, again, without getting too far into it, I think one of the issues that we have right now, one of my issues that I have is the faulty belief that the Packers are going to be a bigger, tougher, stronger team because we're going to use a bunch of tight ends. And I feel like we don't really have big, tough, strong tight ends. We have, like, big wide receivers. At least Musgrave is and Deguara is. And so acting as though we're bulking up, when in reality we're kind of just getting weaker. You know, I mean, it, it feels stronger. Like, oh yeah, we got these big tight ends. We're going to come out with three tight ends. Big boy package. And all we're really doing is we're downgrading from a guy like Rasheed Walker to a guy like Luke Musgrave. We didn't get bigger and stronger. We got significantly weaker. I'm just saying. But we did add more guys, more blockers, and, and this time we're going to employ them to the middle of the field, so I understand the thought process. And ultimately, it works. It's a first down. And again, this is the problem I have with people complaining about the play calling, saying, well, you just come out, run, run, run. Well, it's situational. It's third and two when we run the ball, and, and it's not just a boring old run. I mean, these are somewhat creative. Maybe too creative. I don't know. But, you know, there's, there's constant motion. There's people moving all over the place. This was out of shotgun. And so we've got people blocking to the defensive left. We have Musgrave coming across. We have um, Runyon is pulling. Musgrave executes the block. Runyon actually does a pretty good job and executes a block. Um, doesn't create a hole, but creates enough of a push. People actually get inside of, of guys' chests and push hard enough to be able to just get the two yards. So in my opinion, from a schematic standpoint, they are absolutely being put in a position to succeed. Now, again, the tight ends are are questionable. The tight ends on the outside. Only one of them was dangerous, but even that was dive at his feet and just slow him down, and that was actually good enough. But this is, I mean, we, we are, th this is almost like babying the offense. This is like almost making it impossible to fail. Like we're, we're just, we're stealing three yards and trusting A.J. Dillon to be able to push for that fourth yard so that we get a positive play out of it. And, and so far, the guys have done a suboptimal job. Even on that last play, they got the block, but there was no hole created. It was just kind of stopping the linebacker from moving forward enough so that Dylan can crash into the back of the guard and get that one yard that we needed or two yards. Next play, again, we have motion. I think it's been almost every play, if not every play. I might, might not have forgot to mention it the one time, but we got Christian Watson coming across the formation. He's under center this time. Absolutely looks like another run play. We got A.J. Dillon in the backfield. However, this is going to be a pass. It's a screen to Musgrave. Again, we're kind of just babying the offense a little bit. We're trying to get uh, an easy pass, uh, which is actually kind of unfortunate because everybody crashed so hard. Our, our wide receivers are downfield blocking. It's like, man, if they had turned around, if this was a pass, we got a big play here. 
But to some degree, it's executed fairly nicely, right? They let the guys slip through enough. Jordan gets the ball to them. Sometimes these things have a hard time getting to them. Musgrave does a very good job of kind of just losing the block and slipping out to the side. The biggest issue I have on this play, which could have been a much bigger play, um, is Josh Myers. He's just a lost freaking puppy out here. He has no idea what he's doing. Um, there's a linebacker coming. He doesn't. I, he's staring back at Musgrave for whatever reason, and like he's just watching the play happen. Uh, he decides not to block the linebacker because he doesn't even look to see if somebody's coming. Then he tries to get downfield and, and block a safety, which would have been nice, assuming number 41, the guy that makes the tackle, doesn't exist. But he also whiffs on the safety. I mean, he is just completely lost out there. Which, to be fair, Tucker Kraft tried to block a guy too, and he completely whiffed. So that guy would have ended up making a tackle anyways at some point. So um, again, schematically, it worked. But we had two guys that can't block. So, I mean, it's still a positive play. We, we ended up getting, what do we get on this? We got uh, six yards on the play. Should have been a first down. But we got two guys that, well, one guy that just didn't feel like looking for a person to block until he got downfield. And then Tucker Kraft, um, you know, just completely whiffed on a guy. So again, scheme versus execution. Everybody pretty much did a good job. The play worked. It could have been a lot better. But I guess I won't complain because it could have also failed in 70 different ways that it didn't. So I'll take six yards. Next play, we have two tight ends shifting to the other side. Once again, player comes in motion. I mean, it, it is every play we've got somebody coming in motion. This time it's number 89. Ben Sims comes across the formation and blocks. Actually does a really good job. I mean, he graded out really well. Um, this is a great job. I don't know who number nine is. It's a different defensive end, I guess, but he gets, he gets low. He gets right inside of him. He gets square to him. Then they have Musgrave come across. Musgrave <laughs> kind of causes more problems than anything else. They, everybody's kind of blocked. He comes into help, I guess, and just doesn't find anyone and kind of gets in the way. But so far, the tight ends have kind of done their job, and we did pick up the four yards, so it was a first down pass for six yards, and then a four-yard run for another first down. Again, we got tight ends coming in motion and blocking, and so far, that has worked. Next play, we got Jordan in shotgun with A.J. Dillon behind him. We have no motion on this play. We got Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs running out routes. Both of them are wide open. He throws it to Christian Watson, and Watson catches it. And it is a six-yard completion. So scheme and execution were on point. The blocking was fine. Everything's good. Next play, we actually have double motion to make up for the last play where we didn't have anybody in motion. We got DeGuara coming across the formation and then fires back quickly across going back the other way in the formation. Again, he's going to be blocking. And we have a pulling guard, which again is Runyon, who we should just never do have do that. And this play is just kind of a disaster. This is where we start to see tight ends on Max Crosby causing problems. Now, again, we feel super strong, right? We got two, we got Rashid Walker and two tight ends off on that side where Crosby is. Ooh, dang. Super strong and beefy. The problem is Luke Musgrave's not, he's not a, like, professionally trained blocker. I mean, he technically is, but he's not. Not at an NFL level. So Crosby essentially just slips right past him. In the process, he hits <laughs> Runyon. Now, Crosby doesn't make the play, but he hits our guard so hard he spins around, and I currently have it freeze-framed with John Runyon facing the wrong direction and holding A.J. Dillon. And Dillon is pushing Runyon out of the way. Get out of my way. And now there's a completely unblocked person. The unblocked person is the person that's supposed to be blocked by John Runyon, who's facing the wrong direction. If Runyon could have found a way to just get out of the way, we could have maybe got more than a yard, but he couldn't, so he slowed everybody down. The defense showed up and brought him down. And really, it was just a fantastic play by Crosby to, and I've mentioned this before, where guys will cut to the inside, right? Rather than going where you want them, where they want you to go, which is we're going to start sliding one way and your, your job is to kind of cut us off. So we want you to kind of go to the outside. He's like, nope, I'm going to go back to the inside and then cut back out. Well, by cutting inside, he was just staring at our guys right in the face. So that was, in my opinion, clearly a schematic issue. We should not have tight ends, especially Luke Musgrave, on a premier player. I mean, he's a premier pass rusher, but it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, this guy's a great football player. It's not going to work. Then we got Jordan Love and shotgun, Christian Watson coming in motion. And this is the play that I've been talking about a bunch of different times that we all know about. Um, again, Luke Musgrave ran too deep on his, on his, presumably, right? I mean, we, we're assuming he was supposed to run into the flat. I saw, I started watching the JT O'Sullivan thing. This is one of the first plays he talked about. And, um, you know, again, he, he, he either should have run into the flat or, you know, Christian Watson maybe did something wrong, but I'm, I'm guessing it was not Watson because we all saw Musgrave get chewed out. So he should have run into the flat and he didn't. But again, the, the bigger issue here is that Jordan Love doesn't need to panic. 
he still could have thrown it to Musgrave. He, you know, he did a bad job, but you throw it to Musgrave, and it's probably still a first down. That's in my opinion. The other thing that I haven't even mentioned when I've talked about this play 17 different times is he's got a guy open in the flat on the bottom of the field, on the opposite side of the field, where we have two guys running in the same direction. He probably gets a first down. And you have Romeo Dobbs coming open across the middle of the field. It's not the easiest throw in the world, but he's open. He's NFL open, and that's a pretty big gain. Instead of throwing it to Musgrave, which is a good option, the wide open guy in the flat, which is an option, Romeo Dobbs, who's open, which is an option, he throws it up, which J.T. O'Sullivan calls an interceptable or turnover-worthy play type of throw. The only reason it probably wasn't is because he threw it so inaccurately that the defenders couldn't even get there. But he lobs it up to Jaden Reed, who by the time the ball gets there, ends up being triple covered. It's a panic throw. It's just, it's, I don't know what to do, I'm panicking, and he just launches it in the air to the guy that is absolutely not open. In fact, the the play design was never even to go to him. He's just clearing out. So this is not a schematic thing. We have options. There are guys open. um, And that's what ends the drive, right? I mean, we, and and that's the thing. Like, it's so easy to get off the field. Just one mistake. We had a six yard gain on first down. Then Crosby blows up a play. Jordan panics, got a punt. Like, it was a good drive. Everything was fine. Everything was going great. Like, you're moving, you're moving. And then just, you make two mistakes and you're done. And it's just two. Not even three. You had one good play, two mistakes, and you got a punt. Anyways, that was the first series. Why don't we just take a break right here? Uh, We'll come back and take a look at the second series, which is a um, seven-play drive that ends in a field goal. We will take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. First play... Running the ball, it's an eight-yard pickup by A.J. Dillon. This time, uh, Jordan is under center, and there is no motion. I will say, this is just a really, I mean, the design is really impressive. Like, it's, it's, when I say it's, like, simplistic, I mean it's simplistic in terms of, like, making it hard for them to fail. Like, a lot of double teams and that kind of stuff. But these are some pretty creative run blocking schemes, you know? Like, I'd I'd love to get... uh, coach on to come in and geek out about this kind of stuff because it's it's i mean it's just it's every single run is different like the the way that they have guys blocked and i will say this is again it's an eight yard run big kudos to elton jenkins on this one this was a this was i would say he he did essentially the best job here it's hard to even necessarily describe but we do have a guy coming across the formation again after the snap so there is post snap um you know i not really motion but and again, we got a tight end coming on in on Max Crosby, but it does work. And it's, you know, we're running so far away from him. All you got to do is get in the way. He does a good job of that. Um, in fact, he, I mean, it's a full-on block. I mean, he just takes him on him. I'll, I'll 
see who that was in a minute. I can't quite see his number, but I mean, we got Zach Tom doing a good job on the outside. You got John Runyon's doing a good job. Elton Jenkins did a really good job. He had to get on his horse and, and really wall the guy off, and he does, and he gets up to the next level. Um, but he, he does a, I mean, the timing on these things is, is tough. This is where you can see it's hard to execute, where you have to hold your guy long enough for the guy next to you to get over so you can pass it off to him so he can block and you have to get up to the next level and execute a block. And they did that. So Elton Jenkins and Rashid Walker did a good job here. Elton did a fantastic job of, of holding off that guy and then just completely clobbering the guy at the next level. Rashid gets inside. AJ does a great job of just getting north and south real fast. No hesitation. Um, you know, you don't exactly know which way the hole's going to go, depending on which way the, the offensive lineman is able to block, but he identifies it really quickly, just shoots right off the back of the guy. And, um, I mean, that was, that was one of the, I mean, it's, it's honestly very rare to see that level of execution from everybody, especially when AJ Dillon's in somebody always makes a mistake, you know? Um, so that was just really well done. It was a very creative, um, run blocking play. It was very well executed by every single offensive lineman and by A.J. Dillon. I mean, I feel like I never say that, but that's what happened. So eight-yard pickup puts us in second and two. By the way, we're starting at the seven-yard line. Their punter was having a heck of a day. Second and two, this time Jordan under center. Christian Watson again in motion. A.J. Dillon picks up five yards on a second and two. And again, well, this is boring. We're just running. Dude, It's that's what happens when it's second and two. You run the ball, and we executed. So what's the problem? That was also the uh, Max Crosby pushing... <laughs> Uh, Zach Tom in the back and he belly flop play, which is hilarious. But again, when you look at this play, and, and I like this, when you just need two yards, just steal yards. We have three double teams taking place on this play. Three double teams. Zach Tom is the only guy by himself. Then we have the center and guard on number 95 defensive tackle. You have the right guard and right tackle on the other defensive tackle and two tight ends on number nine to the other side. Like this is this this one's perfect because Max Crosby, and I understand the defense can kind of dictate this, but Max Crosby is up against a tackle. Okay? That's you know, it's a scary matchup, but it's it's somewhat ideal. Plus you're not running to that side anyways. It doesn't matter we're going up the middle. Two tight ends handling their worst edge rusher, and then two double teams on the interior. And again, ideally they get up to the next level. And and uh Josh Myers does do that. He he disengages and gets up to the next level. Elton kind of tries. But again, ultimately, it doesn't really matter. On second and two, just steal those yards, right? We got three double teams up there. So the guys on that first level are not going to be able to do it. We're just trusting A.J. Dillon to make contact. I mean, ideally, again, those guys are able to disengage, get up to the next level, etc. And you can maybe argue that A.J. Dillon didn't trust the blockers well enough or whatever, but we're just, we're just trying to steal two yards, and we did. We got five yards on it. Just get up to that linebacker level and push. All the big boys are occupied with double teams. I, I love that stuff. I mean, it's, 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 again, it's just stealing yards. And that is one of the benefits of having all those tight ends. Because now we're freed up a little bit, especially if we're going up the gut, we're freed up a little bit to, to do double teams in the middle. You just can't horrifically lose on the outside. So I love that. And then we got 15 yards on top of that because of the personal, uh, the uh, unnecessary roughness. Next play, Jordan under center. Again, DeGuara in motion. This time he's in motion, and then after the snap, he doubles back and goes the other way. I mean, it, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I can tell you right now, whatever it is we want to see as far as like the trickery and, and deception and all that, I mean, it's on display. There, there's no doubt. And again, I think a lot of the we're not seeing the creativity is really just coming down to we're not seeing the results we want to see. This is not vanilla stuff. This is this is motion, double motion, reverse motion, <laughs> under center. You know, um, we got guys in motion blocking, we got pulling, we got every single thing is on display here. I mean, Matt LaFleur is still pulling stuff out of his bag. I'm, I'm just saying. Now, we haven't gotten to the bad stuff yet. Maybe this all goes away. I don't really know. But so far, I mean, I'm, I really like what I'm seeing. I'm surprised because I didn't expect to like anything. There's been some issues with execution, especially along the offensive line, but not mad. But this ends up being a play action, which obviously you feel good about play action at this point because... You've been running nonstop. The entire defense bites pretty hard. I think he might have had an option for Watson, but he doesn't quite because because it's a it's like a play action boot or play action rollout, and it's such a dramatic rollout that he's he doesn't really get his eyes downfield super fast. I think there was a window to throw it to Christian Watson, but that you know by the time he actually got turned around, and this is kind of the problem with doing stuff like that. If you're going to play action, that's great, but. The, the, the whole point is you're getting linebackers to bite up. 
So you got to take advantage of that while you can. It's not going to take them long to drop back once they realize you have the ball. And if it takes you three seconds to get all the way into this dramatic rollout, well, the linebackers are back by now. So there was a very brief window where Watson was open. Um, he does have DeGuara right now he could throw to. However, uh, Jordan sees a window to run, and he does take off, so you can't really be super mad at him. Does a great job. I mean, it's a fantastic run. It is a 26-yard scramble, which kind of showcases that next level of ability. So again, um, do I have a problem with the play? No. I think Watson is there. He's open. Uh, Jordan doesn't exactly see it. And he's, he's all, I mean, the, the creativity of the play, by the way, to have, th this is what I love about this play. You've got guys getting open down the field. So the linebackers bite up, right? So like, oh crap, it's a pass. So what do they do? They drop. So they drop hard. Well, then you have a leak. You got the tight end leaking out. Well, now the linebackers are dropped deep to try to cover Christian Watson and you've got a relief valve. So that would have been the, the the guy to throw it to. Now, again, it doesn't matter because he decided not to do it and run, and, and uh, DeGuara does a good job of actually blocking and helping to get some extra yardage. The play is great. The play design, there's no issue in my opinion. I thought it worked. I thought it worked perfectly. It wasn't necessarily executed perfectly, but it ended up working out just fine. Next play, we got shotgun. Again, we have two tight ends and one running back, so 12 personnel. That's been pretty standard so far. DeGuara, once again, in motion. I mean, this is literally like every play. This is a 19-yard completion to Josiah DeGuara. This time you have, and again, you, you want to talk about what is this Shanahan scheme. It's making things look the same, but then doing something different. What happens? DeGuara's coming across the formation. What does he do? He chips or he blocks the end, right? But what's different? He releases. So he comes off the block, and the linebacker can't keep up with him. Jordan throws a great pass, catches it, and he turns up field, and it's 19 yards. I mean, I'm... I'm a big fan of everything we're doing so far. And again, this is this is exactly what we expected from Matt LaFleur. Now, again, we haven't gotten into the bad stuff yet, but just from a standpoint of like, we wanted to see this whole Matt LaFleur, Shanahan, you know, everything looks the same, but it, it ends up being different and motion and creativity and, and deception. And this, this, this is it. So that was a 19 yard pickup. Uh, Jordan Love to Josiah DeGuara. That puts us in first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Now, this is where, again, everything's going great, but then one little thing messes everything up. This is Christian Watson for negative five yards. And again, we've had motion every single play. So it's not like, well, we're not using it, and then when we finally use it, like then you, know, you, 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 you give it to Watson. So obviously they knew it was coming. No, every single play has been motion. So he comes in motion and he actually it's it's double motion. So he comes in motion and then they give it to him behind the quarterback. But what ultimately is the issue? Well, it's of course it's execution. So let's take this a step at a time here. First of all, again, it's very obvious that the defense was ready for it. I mean, they, they were they're they're attacking, you know. Like I, I I almost wonder what would have happened if Jordan had kept the ball, you know, because they've got three guys at that next level that are just firing downhill. So the first issue is somewhat with the play. Again, we're, we're getting a little bit too cute with, with the designs. And, and I understand it doesn't have to be that big of a deal, and it, it probably shouldn't have been. And honestly, this is probably just bad execution because th this guy should not have been able to make even a slight play. Essentially, we got the two guys on the end, which is just... So we have A.J. Dillon out on the field as the back, and, and he's going to go out and block. We've got the tight end on that end. Josiah DeGuara is going to go out and block. And our tackle is going to go out and block. All we need Dontavian Wicks to do is to come in and hit the guy on the end. Because remember, we're in shotgun. Watson's got a ton of speed. Like, there's no reason for this to even be a problem. Wicks clearly is playing scared. Like, he doesn't run into the guy. He kind of just stands there and puts his hands out. Like, no, don't do anything. And so he's just a free runner. Now, we can say that was stupid, but he, all he needs to do is run at the guy and just push him a little bit, and we're fine. He doesn't do anything. So unfortunately, that causes Christian Watson to have to run straight backwards, I mean, or, you know, run completely flat to the sideline as opposed to kind of getting upfield and following his blockers. From there, it's really hard to tell kind of who messed this up. Um, number five, the linebacker is able to make the play. I mean, if you actually look at it, it's like, man, the blocking looks really good. Um, you know, Josiah DeGuara gets a great block. Uh, Elton Jenkins has kind of got his guy, you know, but... I, I don't know if it's Josh Myers that was expected to get up to that next level and get to number five or what. You know, ev everybody kind of did a good job of blocking. There was just one unblocked guy that just shot into the backfield. Um, you kind of wish, I feel like Elton Jenkins probably should have at least put a hand on him because the guy that Elton Jenkins got could have been picked up by Rasheed Walker. Um, 
Yeah, actually, I'm, I, I am going to put that on Elton Jenkins because as I'm looking at it, uh, Myers has got a guy. Elton is getting up to the next level. He takes the guy, the, the wrong, I mean, either way, Rashid, if, if, if Elton's going to take that guy, Rashid could have doubled back and got number five. There's, there's essentially just one, or, or A.J. Dillon. We've got like two double teams essentially blocking downfield, and one guy comes unblocked. Um, if anybody had just taken number five here, you know, again, if Wicks had done even a slight anything, and if anybody had even gotten a hand on number five, this could have been something. I mean, at least a positive play. Maybe even if it wasn't for much, it didn't need to be negative. So, I mean, this is really just uh, guys not knowing where to go. And, and, and that's part of the problem with these plays is people get downfield and they're just trying to find somebody. All right, like, well, I was supposed to get that guy, but I can't get there, so I'm going to go over here. You shouldn't have two double teams downfield, right? <laughs> that's that's two wasted blockers, and one guy made a play. What would have happened if, instead of two wasted blockers, we had number five accounted for and a free blocker to get downfield and get somebody? This could have been a huge play. So, yeah, I mean, the defense is, is coming downhill, that's true, but it just it was just, it's bad execution. I mean, guys are just not, they don't know who to block. So, again, everything's going great, and then all of a sudden, we're in second and 15 now. So, we got... Uh, Jordan Love in shotgun. He splits out A.J. Dillon out wide. Don't think you would call that motion necessarily, but still you got something happening pre-snap. And what do they call? Just a quick wide receiver screen. Again, we're, we're just trying... Obviously, our head coach, while still maintaining a level of creativity, is trying to create as much ease as possible. A quick screen to Jaden Reed. Romeo Dobbs does a good job of blocking. Um, Rashid Walker tries to get out there, and he does help a little bit. He essentially just uses that big body to kind of help push, and we pick up seven yards on the play, right? It wasn't super magnificent, but in second and 15, we're going to get half of that back in one play. I don't hate that, you know? I mean, if you can steal half and get, get into a third and manageable, I like that, and that's what we did. So now it's third and eight. Jordan's in shotgun. Christian Watson comes across the formation in motion. They try to run a screen, but it just, it isn't there. And really, it was just identified by one of the defensive tackles. He saw our uh, running back try to release, and so he essentially just grabs him and drops. And and the other problem is you've got our center, Josh Myers, who is like three, four yards down the field. I mean, he's he's on he's down there with Christian Watson by the time the, uh, the ball comes out. In fact, I think uh, Elton Jenkins technically was too. Now, the timing is all messed up. The ball probably should have been out a while ago. But again, you can't because the defensive tackle is just like hugging our running back. Like, you want to throw it to this guy? You can go right ahead. So, you know, I, I don't know. What, what do, you, do you call that a bad play call? I mean, maybe if you could call it that or just really a great play by a defensive tackle recognizing the play. Hard to know what would have happened if, uh, if that wasn't the case, but that was the case. So, again, you, you got a missed block, which sets up negative five yards. You get half of it back, set yourself up, and then you've got a good play by the defense that just, you know, that's that's it. Ends in a field goal. So honestly, through two drives, I, I don't have a problem with really anything. I mean, I shouldn't say not anything. I mean, there are mistakes that have happened, right? Um, and they just happen to be critical mistakes at critical moments. But um, so far, and yes, I'm still expecting this to get worse, I don't have massive complaints. It's It's this guy should have done this. Maybe that shouldn't have been called here. Whatever. I mean, th- this isn't so far m- any more egregious than any other game I've watched in which we've won, where you're watching the offensive lineman and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, that's just that's just standard stuff. But anyways, um, the uh, defense gets off the field after a... Uh, how many plays? Looks like just five plays ends with a Preston Smith sack. Uh, Jordan Love is back under center. Packers are starting this time at the 10-yard line. This time we have no motion. It is a play-action pass. Again, as far as the creativity and whatnot goes, I'm seeing different things every single time. And and again, if you had to put money down and you didn't bet run here, I'd be surprised by that. Now, did the linebackers bite? No, they didn't. They hesitated, but they didn't full-on commit. But again, we have a similar situation where as soon as the linebackers see what it is, they bail. And what do we have? We have a second layer. We got two guys that leaked out, and Jordan Love hits one of them. This is the one that's to Ben Sims. Fantastic play by Sims. He also had another target on the other side of the field. He could have thrown to either one of them. 
So from a schematic standpoint, it's really simple. We've got, I think, Christian Watson clearing down the left sideline. We have, I believe, Romeo Dobbs kind of coming across the middle. That gets taken away by really deep drop by the linebackers, but because it's a deep drop, we got some underneath options. And Ben Sims just makes a fantastic play here and takes a one-yard gain and turns it into a 12-yard gain by just stiff-arming somebody into oblivion, which, again, is one of the benefits of tight ends, right? If you got tight ends against Max Crosby, that's not great. But you got tight ends against corners, now you've got some stuff working in your favor. So nothing wrong with the play necessarily and just good execution. Next play, we got Jordan Love and Shotgun. We have, I believe it's Tucker Craft comes across the formation to the left side. Then we have uh, running back, I think that's Patrick Taylor, in motion. At the snap, Tucker Craft goes back across the formation from where he just came from. Emmanuel Wilson was in the backfield. He runs into the flat. It ends up being a running play. And the result of the play is negative three yards. Now, this is a play that many of us probably remember. This is the... I believe that's Tucker Craft coming across the formation, trying to take out Max Crosby, completely misses, and Max tackles uh, A.J. Dillon, I think it is. No, sorry, Patrick Taylor in the background, in the backfield. Now, again, I think the idea behind this generally is we're running away from Max Crosby. All we need is for somebody to get in the way, and we're good. I think it would have been nice, and maybe he was supposed to if Zach Tom would have initially popped him. He lets him come free, and Max Crosby comes in so fast that he's there at the handoff. So this is either Zach Tom messed up, or it's one of those things that looks good on the whiteboard, but we're going to have to do away with this. Because if you have a free rusher coming that can get to your running back before your tight end is able to get to Max, that's, you know, not great. And, and, and by the way, we don't need to necessarily have all this motion stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm all for it, but at the same time, you could have just lined up the tight end over there. I understand there's a purpose for lining him up on the left side and then bringing him back, but if he was just lined up there and could have got a, just a quick chip on him, we're good. Now, granted, it wouldn't have really mattered anyways because um, John Runyon lost his block so badly that uh, there really was nowhere for him to go. Actually, now that I look at it, there would have been a beautiful cutback available, but again, Max Crosby would have had to have been eradicated from this equation, which he was not. And, and again, he probably couldn't have been, because you would have had to cut back toward Max Crosby, and I don't think a tight end is going to actually beat that. And of course, we've got uh, <laughs> Josh Myers frog splashing in the middle of the air. So, I mean, this would have devolved eventually anyways. But yeah, from a design standpoint or an execution, I'm not sure that's not going to work. If, if the whole plan is Zach Tom doesn't have to touch him, just throw this in the garbage. Next play, uh, we got uh, Jordan Love in the shotgun. We've got no motion, and it's second and 13, and we throw a two-yard pass. And again, this is going to be one of those situations where people are just going to look at the result and say, what kind of garbage play calling is that? Why would you throw a short two-yard pass on this? Here's the problem. The guy he throws the ball to is not the only one running a route. Now, for my money, I think he could throw it to Romeo Dobbs a little bit further down the line. This is probably a five-yard completion. Maybe he turns around and gets one more. That's something you could do. I think um, maybe, maybe you could throw it to Luke Musgrave. Probably not. But here, here's the thing. Christian Watson's wide open. He's running an out route to the right side of the field. The, the corner is so far off. In fact, that might even be the safety spinning down. I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> he is, um, what are we, three yards behind? So he's eight yards down the field. If you throw it to him on time, he turns up the field, he gets a first down. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. If you would have hit this on time, throw it to Christian Watson. He's wide open. He's wide open, and this is a first down. This is not a play-calling issue. There's nothing wrong with this play. It's second and 13, and, and our offensive coordinator, head coach, called a play that should have been a first down. Watson is wide open. And again, the guy's playing so far off, your eyes should have gone there. Instead, he seems to stare at Dobbs, and then he looks at Musgrave. He kind of looks off to the right, like maybe he wants to throw it to Christian. Um, but then he just, the pressure comes off the side and he just dumps it off. So I, you know, I don't know. And, and it's, it's, it's not a pressure issue because it was plenty of time to get it to Watson. In fact, by the time he actually looked over there, it might've been too late to get it to Watson. This should have been a first down. It ended up being a two yard pass to Patrick Taylor, setting up third and 11. So again, if you want to say, Hey, if there was a little bit more pressure, maybe he sees him. Maybe he gets thrown out there fine, but again, number one, it's it, it would have been too late. Even if it's completed, he probably doesn't get a first down because that guy's coming down after him. And number two, I just timed it. It was 2.85 seconds. Now, that's relatively fast, but in my mind, at 2.5 seconds, everything after that, we're kind of looking at you. It was generally just a terrible job by Zach Tom, by the way. Just, just throwing that out there. 
All right, third and 11, Jordan Love in the shotgun. He checks, so I don't know exactly what the situation is, but he checks to something, and it's a screen pass. So he throws a pass to Patrick Taylor. It's, it's off. I don't know if Taylor's in the wrong spot, facing the wrong way or what, but it's, it's the pass is not where it needs to be. Um, there is blocking down the field. Unlikely to be a first down on that play, though. Um, that's kind of a just third and long, hoping for a miracle type of thing. But that, that is just, that's just bad, just across the board. Anyways, let's take one more quick break. If you want to support the podcast, patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddies, where you can do that for as little as a dollar a month. After the break, we've got the final drive prior to halftime, and it is a three and out. So that'll go quick, and then we'll get on the other side of the half, and we'll see how much we can get done. We'll probably have to finish this a little bit tomorrow, which is fine. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. All right, so the defense just got bled down the field for, I mean, I'm not even going to count that, but let's call it like 17 plays. Um, That ended in a touchdown. Jordan Love gets the ball back, first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Shotgun, play action pass, Jordan Love throws it right to the defender. To make it worse, I mean, Romeo Dobbs is going to come open. If this is a better ball, I think you can probably throw it to Romeo Dobbs. If not, you got a guy in the flat, um, but he doesn't get any air on the ball whatsoever. Hits, I mean, even if that defender wasn't, you you look at it from this other view that I'm looking at it at, and it's like, I, I don't know what he's doing, because if you remove that defender, that ball is not it's not going to get to Romeo Dobbs. I mean, it's, it's, if anything, it's going to be maybe behind Romeo Dobbs, but there's another defender there. There's two guys that are right there. So I guess there's two defenders he didn't see, and he wouldn't have hit Romeo Dobbs in stride. So that's just brutal. I mean, he's got two options. You can throw it accurately to Romeo Dobbs for probably a pretty big completion. You could check it down to Jaden Reed and probably pick up, let's see, roughly we can kind of figure this out here it's obviously hard to tell because once he throws it everybody's going to run the other way but i i would be shocked if he isn't able to pick up five yards at least on that if you just want to dump it off to Jaden reed yeah i mean you can watch i mean just watch behind jordan love that ball would have been so far behind romeo dobbs it's almost like if you just erase those two defenders and assume that romeo dobbs needs to just sit there which i have no idea why because he would have been open across the middle if you throw it out in front of him instead of way behind him I just, I don't understand what in the world that was supposed to be. That's, that's brutal. So the defense has to go back out after that absolutely horrifically long drive. They're able to hold him to a field goal, which obviously is fantastic. And we got to go back out. This time we got Jordan Love under center. We're in 12 personnel again. We've got no motion, which I, I've noticed the last couple of drives we've gotten away from that. It's basically been ever since we had, um... I think Tucker Craft missed that block. It seems like we're doing less less stuff, which again, sort of makes sense. I'm asking you guys to do things, and you can't do it, so let's dial it back a little bit, perhaps. Perhaps that's the thought process. Hand off to A.J. Dillon. He is tackled, I'm not kidding, by four defenders in the backfield. Four guys in the backfield. They had uh, Josiah DeGuara coming across the formation as though, and again, this is the Shanahan thing coming up across the formation to try to get these guys to slow down because if he doesn't hand it there he could easily throw it to Josiah DeGuara I mean if this was a pass play Josiah is wide open there's nobody there they bit so hard on the run how did they know it was a run I'm, I'm it, it, it's it's crazy to me that they never hesitated when we run play action they hesitate if we actually hand the ball off there's four guys behind our line of scrimmage again I I don't see how it's necessarily predictable but it, it must be because they know what we're running that's crazy to me. If, if Again, if Jordan Love hold on, holds on to this ball, and this is actually a pass, Josiah's going. I mean, the Raiders just committed hardcore. Now, in terms of actual execution, because, you know, it doesn't matter, run the ball, execute, whatever, we have Rasheed Walker getting absolutely embarrassed by Max Crosby. Then we have John Runyon, who loses his block. Then we have a double team in which seemingly both of them release. So the guy being double teamed makes a tackle. I mean, this is so ugly. So you've got Josh Myers and Elton Jenkins. Let's just focus on this one block. We've already got two. So Max Crosby's basically making a tackle at this point anyways. We've got somebody firing off the edge. Rasheed Walker's looking around like he doesn't know what to do. John Runyon's about to lose his block. The guy he's blocking is about to come all the way across and tackle on the other side. But let's focus on this double team. Pretty basic stuff. You both hit the guy and block him. 
It looks like Elton Jenkins is supposed to pass him off. But Josh Myers, for whatever reason, rather than trying to come into his chest, is blocking him from his shoulder. So as soon as Elton Jenkins tries to release and get up to the next level, there's nobody in front of the defender. Because he's on the side. They're both on the side of him. So as soon as Elton Jenkins lets him go, he's not blocked. So he comes unblocked. A double team comes unblocked. Because Josh Myers is trying to grab him from his shoulder. From, from the side of him. Standing next to him. Facing the side of his frickin' ear hole. So Max Crosby embarrasses our left tackle. We got a guy firing off the edge. The guy being double teamed, just we just let him come right after our guy. And John Runyon, who is the right guard, lets his guy make a tackle all the way on the left side of the field. Zach Tom is the only offensive tackle that blocked anybody on this play. He's the only one. And maybe Elton Jenkins, but again, Jenkins is like, all right, you got him, cool, I'm going. And Josh is like, no, I got nothing here. So essentially, out of five guys, four of them didn't block properly. And one of them, Rashid Walker, didn't even touch the frickin' guy. So anyways, that was a one-yard loss. Setting up second and 11. Shotgun again. This time we do motion Musgrave. He's, gonna, he's already in the slot. They're going to motion him out basically into the flat as the ball snapped. Man, this next play is bad. Um, so you probably remember this as, as the other play where there was two guys in the same spot, which is where the ball goes. Now the reason for that, essentially, is because Musgrave, who came up or didn't really come across the formation, but motioned out, immediately starts blocking. And the blocker kind of pushes Musgrave back into where we have a running back who's out into the flat. That, that's how they ended up in the same spot. That's where the ball ends up going. Jordan gets nervous. He breaks the pocket. He runs. The defender kind of backs off just enough so that Jordan can kind of throw it to the running back. But the defender gets in there and I think breaks it up. Yeah, he breaks it up so it wasn't even a catch. So that's not really the biggest issue, right? Everybody's looking at it like, you got two guys in the same spot. This is awful, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, I guess fair enough. It's kind of hard because Musgrave can't go down there and start blocking, and, and so he's kind of at the mercy of the defender, who's working his way back to the running back because he knows that's going to be a play there. Here's my issues. Number one, let's talk about Christian Watson, who is at the bottom of the field. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and um, he is the, the defender is about 10 yards off. Christian Watson runs a slant. This is so freaking wide open. It's so unbelievably wide open. If he hits, and this is, this is what Jordan was doing so well all the time. Like, why doesn't he see this now? He should have been able to see this. This is your, your go-to. If he hits this, Christian Watson not only catches it, assuming it's a good throw, he catches it and runs, he's probably getting a first down. So again, we dial up a play that if he throws to the right guy, it's a first down. Now, he's not even looking to Christian Watson's side. He's not even looking over there. So, okay, I guess, and, and again, this is, this is part of the issue. One of the things that was really good about Jordan before is he knew where to put his eyes. He knew where the right matchup was, so he just immediately catch it. Maybe he would kind of move the linebacker for a second, and then boom, his eyes go over there and he throws it. This is one of those things you stare down the middle of the field to freeze the linebacker, and then one, two, three, boom, over to Christian and throw it. This is probably a first down. But instead, he looks in the middle of the field. We got two guys. We got Romeo Dobbs, and we got Dontavian Wicks. Now, if he wanted to, he could have squeezed it into Wicks. Wicks is running just a quick curl. Now, he's going to catch it and go immediately down, and it looks like it's going to be a gain of about, uh, about four. And because we lost a yard, that would put us with uh, seven yards to go. So it would be third and seven. But you could do it if you wanted to. But then there's Romeo Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs is running a deep out route toward the sideline. He is one, two, three, four yards past the sticks. If this ball gets thrown out there, in you know, I mean, it's 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 an automatic first down. He's already past the sticks. Just throw a good ball out there. You can even throw it back toward the sideline, and he can run back and come get it. He's got four yards of cushion to come back away from the defender and catch the pass. Now, Jordan is breaking the pocket at this point. I don't think he needs to. But he's panicked, and so he runs to his right. Now, if, if his eyes are staying downfield, which it appears they are, you can throw it. Throw it on the run. In fact, you could probably stop. You can still throw it to Christian. I mean, it, it, Christian's still open somehow. Um, but he's not even going to bother looking back. He, he is, it's like he, he knows in his mind he wants to throw it to the running back. He's breaking, he's breaking. It's like he's staring at Dobbs. So he didn't throw it to Dobbs. Dobbs is like, all right, I'm going to quick cut up the field. Like, this is kind of standard stuff, right? You run to the outside. It's not there. What do you do? You break up the field. So he breaks up the field and immediately throws his hand in the air. Like, I got him. I'm shoulder to shoulder. Give it to me. Jordan seems to be staring that way. He sees his hand in the air and he says, nope. And he just checks it down to the running back and gets it swatted out of his hand. I mean, he could have thrown it to Wicks and gotten four yards. He could have thrown it to Christian right away. That's almost guaranteed a first down. He's off to the races. He could have thrown it to Dobbs twice. Twice. Dobbs was open for a first down. And then later when he broke the pocket, Dobbs 
straight up the field. If you wanted to throw the ball down to Dobbs, give him a 50-50 shot down the field. This is the kind of stuff, and, and this is what I'm saying, like, this is what Jordan would have done two weeks ago, three weeks ago. This is, this is not the Jordan Love that we saw several weeks ago. And this is, this is what my concern is. Now that there's pressure, we're starting to see all the critiques I had of, of Aaron Rodgers last year. He's getting happy feet. He's getting nervous. He's not seeing the open guys. He's dropping his eyes. He's, he's taking the quick check downs. And it's, it just feels like panic. And we didn't see that from Jordan early. We, we saw a calm Jordan. But now the pressure is starting to ramp up. And I, I just feel like this is just panic. He's not seeing clearly. He's not thinking clearly. He's not seeing the field. He's not reading the defenses. He's not getting his eyes where they need to be. He's not throwing accurate passes. Again, he had three open guys and threw to the one guy that wasn't open. That's freaking crazy. So anyways, now it's third and 11. And, and may I reiterate, for those that are upset about scheme, we had first downs. We had a first down on the last drive. Well, not the last one, which was a pick, but he was open on that one, too. That probably could have been a first down. But the one prior to that, we had a first down, which wasn't taken advantage of, so we had to punt. Then we had a guy open, and he threw a pick. And now we got guys open and not doing it. So anyways, third and 11. And then the next play, essentially, we've got three players sprinting down the field, clearing out, and we're going to attack underneath in hopes that somebody can make a play. Um I don't hate it. it. It seems to work. We clear out. There's a ton of room underneath. I feel like the play is to go... He doesn't seem to want to look to his left, I've noticed. He wants to throw to his right. He just stays to the right side. He doesn't want to throw over to his left side. He's got more room to the left side. Uh, I, I understand not wanting to throw to uh, Patrick Taylor. That's been a disaster every time you've tried it. So if that was the thought, thought process, fair enough. But he had more space and was more likely to be able to turn up and maybe get a first down. He ends up throwing it up to Musgrave. Again, this is another one he kind of chip-blocked and released. There was there was a good amount of space, but, I mean, I, I don't think he gets a first down either way, but even this play, the, the ball is so late. You know, like, Musgrave clears out, he turns around, and he's just standing there, standing there, and then the ball gets thrown to him, and he gets tackled after about four yards. So essentially, everything worked kind of as it was supposed to. Again, I would have thrown it to the other guy, and the ball wasn't thrown on time, but I don't know that it's a first down either way. But whatever. It's a completion to Luke Musgrave for four yards. He goes down short, and we have to punt again. Anyways, Raiders get the ball, they drive down, the Packers defense is able to get a uh, get a stop at the 35, and then we get the incredible Yash Nyman blocked field goal. What a beast. So that sets up seven seconds for the Green Bay Packers to be able to do something. Jordan immediately rolls out to his right, doesn't see anything, so he takes off running and uh, doesn't get out of bounds before time expires. So that's it. That was the end of the half. And again, that just kind of contributes to this sort of ugly, like, not seemingly very aware football team right now where he doesn't get out of time get out of bounds in time where it's just kind of like okay that was interesting anyway second half starts up um they start moving down the field complete about three passes and then boom rudy ford pick defense is starting to pick up the steam a little bit they're getting stops they're getting picks waiting for the offense to kind of reciprocate and get something going here packers start off with a run play jordan love under center 11 personnel no motion we're just going to run to the left side Kind of good and bad. I mean, it's five yards, which I have no issue with uh, getting five yards on first down run. The issue I have is I don't think it was supposed to go to the left side. I was looking at it and was like, dang, man, you put a lot on those wide receivers and tight ends to block, and they did a great job. Kudos to the wide receivers. But that's kind of bold to run in their direction. I don't think that was the intention. So I kind of have two negative critiques here. Maybe I'm being unfair because A.J. Dillon did a good job, recognized an area to run where he could go and pick up yardage. And ultimately, had he done the right thing, in my opinion, it would have gone for less yardage. So again, kind of a weird nitpicky thing, but he immediately abandoned structure. Now, I think he shouldn't have. Well, again, I'm saying that wrong. He, he In hindsight, he should. It's that whole thing where you, you have a 20 on playing blackjack and you hit and you hit an ace. It's like, okay, but... In hindsight, yes, you, I guess, should have done that, but going forward, you should not do that anymore. Essentially, it's really well blocked. There's a combo block between Myers and Elton Jenkins. Uh, Myers comes off of that. Jenkins has him locked up perfectly. Myers gets into position to wall off the linebacker. I mean, there is a clean alley into the backfield. This is beautifully blocked. Now, the reason he actually ends up doing the right thing is because Runyon's about to lose in a half a second here. And if he tries to run between Myers and Runyon, which I think is where this is intended to go, and again, it's beautifully blocked up to this point. You see shortly after Dylan bails on that, which again, I don't think he necessarily should have, but shortly after he bails on it, you see the defender just kind of throw Runyon to the side, like, dude, get out of my way. I still think it would have been worth a try. I mean, again, I like following the blockers. Even if he's able to get an arm around Dylan, you got Dylan pushing, oh, you know, pushing backwards. You've got the offensive lineman pushing backwards. I think he probably, I'm guessing he still gets five yards. But anyways, 
he breaks to the left. Um, he follows the wide receivers blocking, and the wide receivers actually do a good job blocking. Jaden Reed does a fantastic job blocking. Christian Watson's got a guy down the field. Musgrave does a good enough job, considering he had no idea that the play was going to be off to his left. I don't hate it. At this point, considering how bad things are going, that kind of stuff, I, I dig it. Almost everybody did a great job. Dylan made a decision, ended up picking up five yards. Like, that's... I'm circling and underlining this and saying, do that from now on. That was great. Even if it wasn't, it was great. All right, so now we got our swagger back. We got shotgun Jordan Love. We got... I can't quite tell the running back. I think that's Dylan in the backfield, although he looks a little small. Maybe I don't know. It doesn't matter. Two tight ends. So we're back in 12 personnel, and guess what? We got motion, baby. Christian Watson coming across the formation. Ball snapped. Immediately, Josiah DeGuara releases into the flat. He's open. If you want to go that way, he's open. He decides to come off it. All right, so he looks to the middle of the field. Well, there's nobody there yet. He looks to his left. Christian Watson is open, but he's now back to the right. Guess he decided he wanted to check out DeGuara again. You, you can still kind of throw it to DeGuara if you want, but not as good anymore. Still got a clean pocket. Like, we're blocking is solid. Watson is now on the left side of the field, which again, I don't think Jordan likes to look that way, with his hand waved in the air. I'm wide open, I'm wide open, I'm wide open, I'm wide open. He also can throw it, again, to his left in the flat to the running back if he wants to. That's not going to get very many yards. But again, there's options. He decides to take off running to his right. Watson still over on the left side with his hands waving around in the air. Jordan takes off running and slides almost at the line of scrimmage. It's called a sack. It's called a sack for no gain. So if he just decides immediately to throw it to DeGuara, remember, we already picked up five yards. Even if he doesn't get a first down, he's guaranteed to pick up like three. Again, that's forgetting about the whole Christian Watson's wide open on the left side of the field thing. But he decides, no, like I'm not going to take the easy one to DeGuara. I'm going to check around what's going on. He checks to the middle of the field. Nobody's open, right? There was a quick curl. That's covered. Tucker's going up the middle. He's drawing a lot of people up the middle. He's not open, but that should signal to you, hey, he's getting a lot of attention. What about Watson? He doesn't really bother to check Watson. Again, breaks the pocket and then takes a kind of sack, I guess. So anyways, now it's third and five. And this time he does flip it out immediately to Luke Musgrave. I think this is just designed the whole way. Matt LaFleur just took away his options. Uh, Musgrave releases into the flat. Watson immediately starts blocking. So this was this was 100% going to be the thing. So, and again, I'm, I don't want to be making statements that I don't know are true, but I'm, I, I would understand, let's just say, if Matt LaFleur at this point decided we're going to start taking decisions away from Jordan Love. We're giving him options and he's not seeing the field. So let's just start doing one read stuff. Let's just say the play is throw it to Musgrave. That's that's the play. So Musgrave catches it. He's able to turn up the field and grab three yards on that, setting up a fourth and two. Packers decide to go for it on fourth and two. Packers come out again in 12 personnel. Jordan Love under center. And again, from a play calling standpoint, do you go for it? Do you run it? Do you pass it? Bottom line is if it doesn't work, everybody's going to say it's terrible play calling. If it does, then we don't say that, which I don't think is the way that should work. But either way, they run it and they get it. They do have Christian Watson in motion. He motions from the outside, kind of more into the slot, and, you know, sort of releases out to block. So they do a lot of that motion blocking. I'm making up terms, but I'm going to call it motion blocking. So he's going to come in motion toward the line of scrimmage, or toward the offensive line, away from the sideline, trying to paint a picture, but I can't use word. And he's going to release into a linebacker to block him. And again, what do the Packers do? This is my favorite thing. It's the same thing they did earlier. They got Zach Tom by himself. We've got a double team with Runyon and Myers. We've got a double team with Zach Tom and uh, Rasheed Walker. And we have a double team with the two tight ends on the other side. We have three double teams. Now, we're not really touching the linebackers, but we don't care. You two push this guy as hard as you possibly can. We're, we're forcing wide open holes here. They're going to close, but we don't care. We're just trying to steal yards. We just need to steal two yards. Dylan does a fantastic job of finding the area that has the most penetration and just following it. And he picks up three yards. Again, I like that. I, I love that they do that. If, if you want to just steal yards, go steal yards. I mean, it's kind of like the whole tush push or whatever we're calling it. It's a little bit different, but it, it, it has the same effectiveness. Like, th this, is never, this is not the kind of play you'd generally want to call, because generally you want to try to get up to the linebackers, you want to try to generate bigger, more explosive play. You know, on first and ten, you don't want to get two yards. But on fourth and two, heck yeah. So now we got first and ten. 
We're on the Raiders 26. We're moving. We're driving. And let me just let me just fast forward here. Because again, people are complaining about the play calling. It's so predictable. It's so horrible. You know what happens? Let me just go from the start. This 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 started. AJ Dillon, five yards. Jordan Love basically sacked himself. Jordan Love, uh, one read to Luke Musgrave. Then it's Dillon, 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 Dillon touchdown. Again, if you want to complain about the play calling, how about this? There's only one thing that's working. Just keep doing it. I don't know what else to do. I'm calling plays. They're not being executed. Right now, for some reason, Dylan, we're able to generate running. I'm just going to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Run for three, first down. Run for six. Run for 11. Run for four. Run for a five-yard touchdown. That's how this play goes. We're going to complain about play calling? Bro, this is survival right now. Nothing's working. We're just going to grind Dylan because I don't know what else to do. And if that stops working, which it does, then we got nothing left. At least, again, this is me just thinking it through up to this point. If I'm the coach, what am I doing? I'm calling plays. Guys are freaking open. Jordan's not seeing it. He's not throwing it. And we're punting, 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 punting. Anyways, again, 12 personnel. Jordan under center. We've got Josiah DeGuara in motion. Again, we're back to motion almost every single play. He's going to motion block. We also got Runyon pulling. He does almost nothing, but so does the defender he's supposed to block. So that doesn't really mean anything. And honestly, a lot of the credit here goes to Tucker Craft. I mean, essentially from Elton Jenkins left guard down, they're just washing everybody out to the right. He just goes to the right tackle along with um, Myers and Zach Tom and just blasts everybody. And really, Tucker kind of does the same thing. So Rashid does a good job too. He's got a linebacker or something. He's just dog walking him straight back. Tucker, and I don't know if this is what he's supposed to do, but he just washes out a guy too. So they just wiped out the entire defensive line and they're like, all right, go get yards. Go, go hit that safety up there. Or wiped out the defensive line, if that's not what I said. Uh, Josiah DeGuara does a good job. He kind of comes in, tries to help, and then gets downfield and squares up. So, I mean, just, it's it's kind of like a sloppily well-executed play. I don't know if that's how it was supposed to look. It was just absolute mass destruction. But I dig it, right? If, I mean, listen, if you want to get, like, 12 personnel, and you want to be big and strong and physical, do that crap. Have three guys just wipe out two defensive linemen. Then have your tight end just blast a guy from the side and wipe him out. Then have another tight end come up and block one of the linebackers and have your 200 and freaking 30 pound, however big this guy, uh, 45 pound, how big is A.J. Dillon? He's a massive human being. Just come full speed downhill and just hit the first thing he sees. I'm all about that. I dig this. This time we're going 11 personnel. We got Watson in motion. Jordan under center. Again, it's a run. As I mentioned, these are all runs. This time it's to the left for 11 yards. Left side seems to be doing some damage. Actually, fantastic runs, zigzagging all over the place by A.J. Dillon. One of the better runs I think I've seen all year. Again, a little bit unnecessary. The offensive line does a fantastic job blocking here. Uh, Runyon's got his guy. So essentially, he's trying to run, is supposed to run between Myers and Jenkins. And Rasheed Walker and, and Jenkins have got guys pushed off to the left side. Fantastic job. They got him walled off. Myers actually does a really good job. Um, he does get the, the defender does get free, but he blasts him to the right side. Runyon's got his guy to the right. Zach Tom's got his guy to the right. So there is a clear lane for him to run through. I'm actually kind of mad he didn't run through it, but probably about the same result. He decides to cut back because that's what he does. Um, gets kind of lucky because both of those, I mean, it's so, so well blocked. And this is one of the things that happens to our defense. Sometimes it gets me frustrated. It's so well blocked that there's just gaping holes everywhere for him to run through. So he decides not to go through the first design gaping hole, jumps to the other side, runs through the second design or not designed gaping hole, um, which I'm not a huge fan of. But again, fantastic job blocking. Everybody did such a good job. Dylan does decide to jump through there, um, has to break an arm tackle, which he does, which again is kind of unnecessary. He shouldn't have needed to do that. But same result either way. He breaks through there, gets to the next level, and uh, goes down when he meets the safety, which as far as I'm concerned, when you're designing run plays, that's usually from what I've seen, how these are designed. Get to the safeties. And uh, this is one of the few times I've seen a, a play that was so well blocked and executed by the tight ends, the, the offensive line, and Dylan that it actually could get to that level. I'm having fun. I don't want to stop this, but we'll, we'll get to the touchdown and then I think we'll call it and finish this tomorrow. But again, that was second and four and it was an 11-yard run. It is now first and goal from the nine-yard line. Again, we've got 11 personnel. This time, Jordan is in shotgun. A.J. Dillon in the backfield. we got trips to the right. All three wide receivers bunched up out there. And again, the good thing about this, I mean, with, with the way that they have this, and even the way the defense is lined up right now, I mean, this is so great for a run play. We have six linemen. we got five guys in a tight end. 
They've got essentially five guys, and one of them is pretty useless. He's so he's you know wide now. He's way out there. the The two guys on the end are so far out. Well, they, I guess they have six guys, but just three on the interior and one linebacker. The safeties are all the way back in the end zone. The corners are way out. I mean, if you can block this, there's, there's so many easy yards here, right in the middle, and that's what they do. They run right up the middle. Josh Myers does so. You got Elton Jenkins and Josh Myers combo blocking. Myers releases, gets up to the next level. I mean, if if John Runyon and Elton Jenkins could hold their block, this could be a touchdown. Unfortunately, they can't, especially Runyon. So the two defensive tackles collapse and take down Dylan. It's still a four yard pickup, but if they could have just held on a little bit longer, if we could have got Dylan going a little bit faster, you know, I mean, there's there's one linebacker getting just obliterated by Josh Myers. This is a walk in touchdown, but again. Runyon and Elton Jenkins can't hold the block. So now it is second and goal from the five yard line. And again, we have run, 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 run. And now we have this play. Again, 11 11 personnel, Jordan in the shotgun, AJ Dillon in the backfield. Watson is by himself at the uh, left side. And then Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs to the right side. Handoff again in the middle. And this time he gets in for a touchdown. Got Musgrave coming across the formation to the left side. And again, this is sort of a stealing yards play again. We got Zach Tom by himself to the right side. And we got two double teams right in the middle. The, the one interesting thing here, and this could have been a disaster, but it's, it's creative, it's risky, and it worked. Musgrave doesn't block Max Crosby. Instead, Musgrave runs straight to the left into the flat. Jordan Love is staring right at Max Crosby. Max Crosby, instead of attacking Dylan, freezes because he doesn't know if he's about to hand it off or if he's about... He, he, it's almost like he thinks he's about to pull it, which maybe, you know... Certainly could have been an option, but it actually freezes Max Crosby so he doesn't make a play. He's unblocked. He freezes. Ball goes to Dylan. Max Crosby identifies it. He gets there really fast, but Dylan just is able to get to the hole, and they're just ping-ponging back and forth all the way into the end zone. So again, it's just that double-double team. Double up, two guys on the inside, create just this big hole in the middle. Probably not much blocking up there, but you know we, we just trust that we have so much force in the middle. We got four guys compared to your two. And we have a really big bruising back. If we just use that as a wedge and we push forward, we should be able to pick up yards. Now, this was second and five. They were probably expecting to get maybe three. I mean, you're, of course, trying to get a touchdown, but I don't know that that was necessarily the expectation. But they ended up getting it using, again, that formula. Anyways, we've got one, let's see, two, three, four more drives for the Green Bay Packers. we got to cover. Again, we will do that tomorrow. Um... And, and, and again, honestly, my perspective is this, this feels like a normal Matt LaFleur offense. This feels like a normal, I mean, the, even the level of play from the offensive line feels about the same as usual. I don't see a whole lot of like, this is much worse than I've seen in the past. This, this feels normal, especially, you know, the run blocking is like, yeah, I mean, Elton had him and then lost him or Runyon, like, you know, Myers, what are you doing? I mean, this is standard stuff. Not good, but standard. And the run game worked in this game more often than usual. I mean, I... I know, but listen, I wish I had a different opinion because people hate my opinion. The, the opinion right now of Packer fans seems to be circle the wagons around Jordan Love and throw Matt LaFleur under the bus. I had no problem with play calling. I really didn't. Pretending that there wasn't motion, pretending that this wasn't creative play calling, pretending that guys weren't open, nonsense. Guys were open almost every single play. Jordan was not pulling the trigger, period. There were options. And it's not, a, it's, again, if there was pressure, I told you about the pressure. It, it was not like, well, there was a guy open and Jordan was about to throw it, but he got sacked. He hasn't been sacked once. He hasn't been touched once. Not before the ball came out, at least. Listen, at this point in, in the game, and it's still the third quarter and there's still more to go, and there's, there's plenty of blame to go around in terms of missed blocks and, and things of that nature, but I'm sorry, this is on Jordan Love. And that, that's not to say he can't be a good quarterback. I'm just saying the blame is very squarely in one place in this particular game. So anyways, again, we'll finish this tomorrow as well as cover a couple other things if we have time, namely the games. But I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.